The 8816 conveyor paver manufactured by Leboy is designed to lay asphalt up to a thickness of 6 inches for newly paved parking areas and secondary roads, or to repair older roads and parking lots. The paver is equipped with electric over hydraulic and manual thickness controls and features an 8 foot to 15.6 foot wide screed. The paver features a propane heated floating screed and two 45 inch hydraulically operated extensions. The screed is equipped with two hydraulic vibrators which produce 3500 vibrations per minute and a variable crown system which can be placed in the leading or trailing edge and can create negative or positive crowns on the pavement being laid. Correct maintenance and service are critically important for proper, safe operation of the machine and to prolong its useful life. Also, safe operation of the 8816 paver requires heightened awareness, as it is the operator's responsibility to safeguard the workers walking alongside the machine. Before operation, it is important to perform required checks and inspections. Before you perform these procedures, it is necessary to be familiar with all of the operations, servicing, and parts by referring to the operator and parts manual for the paver. It is also critical to read and follow all of the dangers, warnings, and caution decals posted on the machine. Become familiar with all of the pinch points on the machine and the safe operation of the controls. We'll discuss more specific operations and safety issues later in the program. Refer to the maintenance manual for recommended maintenance intervals. Some procedures should be performed daily, while others are to be performed weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, and annually. Daily Maintenance Cleaning the paver at the end of each working day is extremely important and is critical to keep long-term maintenance costs to a minimum. The paver should be cleaned at the end of the working day while the machine is still hot. Any parts that come in contact with the asphalt, such as the screed plate, augers, the conveyor, and the hopper, should be sprayed before you start work and at the end of the day to prevent buildup of the asphalt, which can cause increasing maintenance problems. Pull out the spray down hose and spray the auger chains through the slots provided. Spray down the augers while they are turning and spray the sides for raising and lowering the augers. The fuel tank should be refilled at the end of the day to keep condensation from forming in the tank. Also, check the engine and hydraulic oils and replenish them if needed. Lubricate the thickness control screws and the extension slides at these critical points with grease to keep all the parts working smoothly. Weekly Maintenance At the beginning of each work week, perform weekly checks and maintenance as described in the maintenance manual. Begin by looking at the hydraulic fluid gauge and adding oil if the current level is low. To fill the tank, remove the top of the return filter and add hydraulic fluid as specified in the manual. Check the conveyor drive chain while the conveyors are turning. If the drive chain has excessive loose motion in it, the chain must be adjusted. Use extreme care when making any checks or adjustments with the unit running. Check the manual for locations of all the grease points on the paver. Grease points should be lubricated with a grease gun filled with an approved lubricant during periodic or hourly maintenance as described in the manual. Pay particular attention to the fittings that require daily greasing. These include the auger grease fitting on the end mount. Other fittings must be greased weekly, including the depth screw in both locked and unlocked positions, the main flight screw's ball socket and nut, all screws on the extension, the tubes at the chrome rod extensions, the tilt screws, the screed pivot, the slope cylinder pivot, the cutoff cylinder rod ends, the auger raise and lower slides, and the inner auger bearings. Open the battery compartment and check the battery cables to make sure they are well connected and free of corrosion. Check the air cleaner by removing the cover and removing the primary and secondary filters. 
Replacing dirty filter elements is an important maintenance step because even a small amount of dirt can quickly cause engine wear. The filter should be replaced every 250 hours. After checking or replacement, replace the filter cover. When the engine is cool, remove the radiator cap and check for correct fluid level. Remove the dipstick for the double pump drive and check it as you would the engine oil level. If the level is below the add line, replenish the oil to the proper level. Monthly maintenance. The engine oil should be changed following the recommendations of the engine manufacturer. There is an oil drain hose inside the right hand side cover. The oil filter should be replaced every oil change. Refer to the manual for proper oils. Monthly or at 100 hours of operation, check the oil level in the torque hubs by removing the plug at the 9 o'clock position. To position the hub, drive the machine until the plugs are at the 12, 6 and 9 o'clock positions. If oil comes out when you remove the plug at the 9 o'clock position, no oil is needed. If oil does not come out, fill at the 12 o'clock position until oil runs out of the 9 o'clock position. Replace both plugs and repeat the process on the other torque hub. To check the flight chains for proper adjustment, the machine must be run up on ramps to provide access to the roller assembly adjustments. Always back the paver onto the ramps. Because the cutoffs are low, make sure they are open and that the augers are raised before backing up onto the ramps. To adjust the chains, first loosen the lock nut on each adjuster bolt. Turn the adjustment bolts in an alternating sequence to adjust the chains. When correctly adjusted, the chains should not hang below the frame and should be one half inch away from the rear frame square tube. After the correct tension is set, tighten the lock nuts on both sides. Do not let the chains run more than two inches below the main frame sides under the machine. Before startup, check the engine oil. To check the oil, remove the oil dipstick, wipe it clean, reinsert it, and look at the level indication. The oil must be within the full lines on the dipstick. Next, check the hydraulic oil level by looking at the hydraulic oil level and temperature sight gauge. The hydraulic oil must be visible and the gauge should appear to be full. Check the fuel supply by opening the fuel cap and checking the visible level. The fuel level can also be checked by looking at the fuel gauge on the dash. Before startup, inspect the machine for any malfunctioning, missing or broken parts and perform any necessary repairs. Check the hydraulic hoses for wear and leaks. Check fuel lines and tanks for leaks. Check the propane tank to make sure it is full. Before starting the engine, clear the auger and the feeders and make sure all covers and guards are in place. Startup procedures. Make sure the joystick is in the neutral position and place the throttle in the idle or one-half position by pressing and holding the throttle switch in the up or down position. Insert the key into the ignition and turn it to start. When the engine is running, throttle back to idle by pressing and holding either throttle switch on the dash panel in the down position until the idle speed is reached. Allow the engine to warm up before moving the paver. To stop the engine, throttle back to idle and then turn the ignition key off. Operation Procedures When all of the required checks have been properly performed and all necessary safety precautions have been taken, the 8816 paver is ready for field operation. Lighting the burners to heat the screed requires extreme caution, as propane gas is volatile and combustible. Before lighting, make sure all of the burner valves are turned off. Then turn the valve on and use a flame source to light the main burners. Repeat this procedure for the opposite side. Use the igniter for each side to ignite the right and left extension burners. After the screed has heated for approximately 15 minutes, turn the burners off by closing the burner valves. Heating the screed helps prevent hot mix from sticking to the cold screed plate 
and produces a smooth, tight, matte surface. Heating should be performed at the beginning of a job and also between loads if the paver is idle for a long enough period of time to allow the screed to cool. If you are paving on a cool day, it may be necessary to maintain a low heat level on the screed throughout the operation. To do this, reduce the pressure on the propane tank to 6 to 8 pounds. The feeder conveyor is a critical part in the operation of the paver, requiring close attention. When operating the feeder, spray the drive chain several times a day during operation with cleaning solvent from the sprayer. Watch the chains for irregular movement from one side to the other. If the chains begin to operate irregularly, they must be adjusted. Gauges located on both toe point cylinders of the paver provide a convenient reference for the operator to determine the height of the screed. Before paving, the operator should position each of these gauges to zero. While paving, the operator can make adjustments to the screed using the toe point adjustment. The grade switches on the dash must be on and the joystick forward with the engine running for the toe point adjustments to work. The cutoff gates provide another extremely important function for the paver. The cutoffs are used to control the flow of asphalt to the screed. They are used at the beginning and end of each pass or pull. The cutoffs are controlled by the left and right open-close cutoff switches on the dash. Positioning the switches to open increases the flow of asphalt to the screed, and positioning them to close decreases the flow. When loading the machine, make sure the cutoffs are completely open, and make sure the augers are raised to avoid damage to the cutoffs. The electric spray down is used to spray cleaning solvent on any part of the machine that comes in contact with asphalt. To use the spray down, unroll the hose and set the spray down switch to on. Then squeeze the handle and spray. After spraying, turn the switch off and rewind the hose and sprayer into the stowed position. When spraying with the solution, always be sensitive to the environment. The sonic augers gauge the amount of material that is in the extensions. They are used when paving 8 feet or wider where the augers are capable of running material over the side of the end gates, creating the need for extra handwork. To operate the sonic augers automatically, the left and right auger switches on the left side of the dash must be in the automatic position, while the switches on the right side of the dash must be in the slave position. In addition, the left and right auger switches on the remote screed boxes must be set to the on position. An operator can operate both the augers and conveyor from either side of the operator's console. The sonic adjustment dial on the side of the control box adjusts the amount of material needed or manually selects the speed of the auger. To adjust the height of the material, Start with the dial at 2 o'clock and adjust it counterclockwise for less material and clockwise for more material. Keep the extension full, making sure you don't overrun the extension with the material or it can spill around the front of the end gate. The auger raise and lower valve is located under the seat on the left side of the machine. When raising or lowering the augers, this valve must be set to the auger raise and lower position. Then work the extension toggle at the left screed remote box to set the height. When paving, the augers should be all the way lowered. Anytime the augers are raised or lowered, the cutoffs must be open. The run stop toggle switch on the steering box will stop the machine when it is set to the stop position. When the machine is stopped with the toggle switch, the paver will resume travel at its previous set speed when the switch is placed back into the run position. To drive the paver, make sure that the steering wheel is centered. Then lift up on the neutral latch on the joystick. Push the joystick lever forward slowly to reach the desired speed. To move in reverse, pull the joystick backward. To stop, place the joystick in neutral. A guide bar, located on the front end of the hood on either side of the paver, is used like a rifle sight to see accurately where asphalt is to be applied. 
Have a second person adjust the guide while the operator sights its position. To set the screed for paving, move to your starting position and set the screed to the desired width. Set the screed toggle switch to the float position, which will remove the hydraulic pressure from the cylinders. Turn the flight screw approximately one complete turn clockwise. To obtain the desired crown or valley, loosen the hex nut and the two bolts on the slope supports on the right side of the screed. Use the crown adjuster handle, pushing down for crown and up for valley. On the first pass, unlock the depth screws and the lower end gates to approximately one quarter inch of the desired depth. This should provide a nice square edge on the asphalt. The scale, located on each end gate, will show the proper depth setting. Tilt adjusters on the end gate should be set so that the front of the end gate tilts slightly downward when the screed is lifted. This will allow the end gate to set itself to grade. The screed extension should be heated before they are adjusted to extended width. Adjust the tilt on the rear edge of the extension by turning the adjustment nut counterclockwise with a wrench. If drag occurs in the center of the screed, too much pressure is being applied to the extension, causing it to bear all of the weight. If this occurs, turn the adjustment clockwise until both the screed and the extension produce the same matte texture. Open the hopper wings into working position. When you first start to pave, allow only a partial load of asphalt to enter the hopper. Set the left and right conveyor switches to the automatic position to convey material back to the screed. Open the cutoff gates behind the auger and begin paving. Move slowly at first so adjustments can be made to the screed. Run the paver from one side only, either the left operator's side or the right. For safety, wear OSHA required safety equipment when operating the paver. Always make sure no person or object is in your line of travel. And look before changing your direction. When all of the checks, setups, and maintenance actions described in this video and in the service manual have been performed, the Leboy 8816 paver is ready for safe field operation. These procedures, properly performed on a regular and timely schedule, will result in long and trouble-free operation in all field conditions.